Sega. Hello and welcome to the first Let's Play for Total War Warhammer. I'm your friendly neighbourhood community coordinator, Joey Dalton, and I am joined by Al the Hatman Bickham. <laughs> Hello. Who will be driving our, our battle for us today, and Simon the Man Man. Hello. So we're going to show you the ambush at the Thundering Falls. You'll be able to play as the dwarfs, as High King Thorgrim Grudgebearer, and you'll be facing off against Knobnails Backbiter. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Mm. So we're going to hop right in and talk you through some of the units that you will be playing with. And just a reminder, everything that you see here is pre-alpha footage, so it may be subject to change. March on, brave Dowie! March on! To the cursed realms of the Groby we go! I know not what mischief they cause, but they're up to something for my beard hitches with trouble. We take the underway, these ancient highways, built by dwarf hands, give us the best chance of approaching swiftly. Catching the green skins unawares. Let us not dawdle, for there are grudges to settle, and new entries in the Damas Kron to write. Okay, you can see the, the dwarf and throng arrayed on the hill here, um, led by, there he is, High King Thorgrim Grudgebear himself, actually reading from the Damas Kron right in front of him, the Great Book of Grudges. Uh, joined by Thane as well. This is one of the agents. This is a melee agent, so he does runs around the campaign map, does actions, can be attached to an army and get stuck in with the rest of the dwarves. So they're a very uh, defensive army. As you can see, I mean, they're, they're great artificers. They create these wonderful cannons, uh, which are really, you know, some of the most potent in, in the old world. So like the flame cannon here, uh, which spews these kind of superheated packets of oil and tar, uh, doing big splash damage. Organ guns here, kind of repeater cannons, uh, great against massed infantry. Iron Drakes with these big sort of underslung alchemical flamethrowers. Look, they even got beard armor. Because, uh, you know, who wants to singe your beard when you've got flamethrowers? It's not good. So, uh, Thunder is here. Um, kind of like Marksman, good armor piercing ability as well. So, you know, useful against heavily armored units. And Quarrelers, Crossbowmen as well. Now, Slayers, these guys are pretty cool. Um, yeah, totally. They, they, they're, they're unbreakable. So they're kind of berserkers, effectively. And if you look at the panel on the side here, it says anti-large, so they're useful against the big monsters. So we're going to get those tour in against those. Um, we've got lots of dwarf warriors as well who are excellent in melee and, you know, can really, really take a charge really well. Um, as I said, very, very sort of defensive army. So I'm going to get them all set up now. Um, so I'm going to go for a pretty standard defensive formation because we are going to be attacked by... Uh, waves, waves and waves and waves of uh, greenskins. So, and they're all going to be coming, you know, there's a main kind of force in the distance over there, but we're also going to see them pouring out of these kind of side roads that they've overtaken a bit of the, uh, the ancient dwarven um, stronghold there. But yeah, out of these side roads, they are just going to come wave after wave. So I'm going to stand and defend as best I can. So, right, that's those guys set up. Let's get my ranged chaps on the hill here. Can actually get both my units of Iron Drakes over this side. Because, but, um, you know, it may surprise you to hear, I've played this battle once or twice, so I know where they're coming from. <laughs> nice. So, is that cheating? Oh, is that it cheating? isn't. Okay, <laughs> good, good. Excellent, right, right. Well, Oops. Although if you to... lose, it will be egg on your face. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yes, <laughs> We yes. won't let you live it down. <laughs> it won't be the first time. Um, so I'm going to keep those guys in reserve as well. Right, let's get started, actually. Good luck, Al. Thank you. Right, let's do a little bit of early manoeuvring guys out in the field so they're not going to get shot in the back by my own gunners. Yeah, I, I have taken a lot of damage from friendly fire, yes. especially with the Iron Drakes. Yeah. But kind of, as with previous Total War games, it is very much about using the train. That's especially true for the dwarfs, right? Like, all the dwarfs' damage, or most of it at least, comes from their ranged units. They're like cannons and they're kind of quarrelers and kind of like all those different and the thunderers, the thunderers at the thundering falls. Um, <laughs> that's where all their damage comes from, but their melee line is very good at holding off enemy advances so that's kind of what it is they're kind of a two-part army it's about like kind of defending the line while using your range units to just deal that heavy damage here oh so you've got is that a couple of ranged units at the back there but mostly goblins 
goblin spearmen. Yeah, there's a lot of goblin spearmen, a lot of goblin archers in this battle. Oh, look, Iron Drake's firing. Oh, lovely. He's dealing a lot of damage yeah. there, so kind of they're hitting stuff. hard. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're quite good in units of goblins, but they are easy to rout, mm. right? So I'll see here the uh, goblin spider eyes are actually trying to kind of find gaps in your formations to try and hit the kind of range units around your back. So, you know, they'll very much be trying it, to... Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, okay. to take out your range uh, units. You know, they're very good at uh, picking the soft oh, targets. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, this is completely oh, ruining brilliant. yourself rather quickly. So as the dwarfs, you've got to be really kind of aware of what's going. Well, I suppose in anyone's got to be very aware. Oh, man, right. Oh, no. Straight into my range units. You know, as the dwarfs, if you lose your range units, you're actually in a lot of trouble because you're not dealing the damage you need to deal to counter the enemy's kind of forces. So that, that red icon that was just there on the left, so when you click that, it will take you exactly to that where the ambush is coming yeah, from so you can see what you're up against. And we also display that on the battlefield as well, right? So you yeah. can actually see its location. You can just sort of glance over and go, oh, OK, that's where they're mm. coming from. So, yeah, another wave coming in from the side here. Oh, five minutes, is that? Yeah, oh, and oh. some uh, no! Doom Divers as well. <laughs> Great. So this is something that's very kind of particular to quest battles as well. You know, we're bringing reinforcements at you from lots of angles that maybe you wouldn't normally see from a campaign game because we're actually in control of kind of where the enemy comes from, like kind of where the deployment areas are. We're able to kind of throw some curveballs at you to kind of try and keep the challenge like interesting for it, basically. I really like how sneaky the AI is being. <laughs> form these guys back up. Uh, you know, fortunately, I did all right here because dwar even dwarf ranged units are like, they're pretty heavily armored, so um, you can come back as well. I think they were chasing some guys off the field there. Because, um, you know, it, these, these points at the back and the side, they also count as kind of exit points for routers. Well, that's the interesting thing, because for the first time, I think, in a Total War game, you've actually got non-square playable areas, right? Like, you're fighting in the yeah. Dwarf and Underway here. And, yeah, you've like, got As you can like see, a it's lane. a kind of long tunnel, but mm. there are points for your units to route out and for reinforcements to come, kind of around the map, as it were. So you get some interesting battles. Uh-oh. What's that? From the rear out. Oh. Okay. <laughs> What's coming in? And it's some trolls. So we've got some Heavy trolls trolls lumbering. So and trolls are a uh, monstrous unit. Mm. And a giant. Brilliant. It's something that Al uh, can really nice. leverage his slayers and right. actually do a lot of damage yes, if he yes. chooses to. It's slayer. It's slayer o'clock. Actually, I'm going to bring yeah, my thunderers up as well because they're, they're quite good armor piercing. And, you know, the trolls and that giant are pretty good. Yeah, armor piercing is definitely useful here. But, I mean, that info panel on the left hand side is, is really useful to see kind of that, that extra bit of translation if you're not totally mm. familiar with the Warhammer Fantasy Battles universe. That will give you a good indication of what's good against which unit. So the slayers are anti-large, so Al's putting them in against the giant. Watch this. Wee. I love the way, once again, like the kind of charging stuff, the way units kind of leap in, so the slayers will kind of leap in with both Ooh. axes and slice, but the giant's going to be dealing a lot of damage. But since there's so many of the slayers, they're surrounding him and hitting the giant on lots of different sides, so kind of they're dealing little damage over time, whereas the giant is kind of one massive one hit of damage slow, there, yeah. Massive, yeah. With massive knockback, so you know they're taking damage from it, but they're going to be whittling down its health very quickly. So if the Al hovers over it now, you can probably see it's got quite low health. Oh, oh and it's gone! Down. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, once again, the character in all the animations is Ooh. absolutely. Oh, he's got those routing as well. Oh, they, oh they're at there. Look, they are right up in my thunderers. <laughs> this is not good. Right. Thorgrim holding the line at the front there, keeping the troops uh, keeping the troops happy, obviously. So Thorgrim also has his General Zora, right? Like, generally, when you press down space or something, you can see the General Zora. But we've also added some new features. So on the right there, as you'll see, like, you can now toggle on and off features on spacebar, but then also lock them. So even when spacebar isn't held, you can see your General Zora, for example, and things like that. And it's just kind of oh, little fantastic. ways where letting you kind of customise the UI to your play style and get it so you could show, like, health bars for every single unit, for example, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's actually quite cool. All right, it looks like the big the big uh, forces of the distance are on the move as well now. So let's get everybody ready for a big frontal attack. Look, they're still chopping away. Oh, they're going down. Look, they're wavering. Is it still turning them? But your air, air support has arrived. Ah, oh, fantastic. Let's get over there. Right. Right. So these are some of my favourite Dwarfen units. These are the Dwarfen gyrocopters. Um, you know, kind of, they rely on machines, right? They haven't got any magic or anything like that, so they're relying on these kind of fast-moving units to kind of make up for their lack of mobility on the battlefield. So they're able to fly around, deal a lot of damage with their kind of 
guns, but they also have a special ability, which is uh, to be able to drop bombs. So that when you press the ability button, which is on the bottom left-hand side, you can actually drop bombs at the location of your gyrocopters. Oh, Let's I see. That. You know what? I'm going to get them over here. So you here. can actually kind of do your own little bombing run, basically, kind of flying across the enemy and just drop the bombs at the right time. Ah, see, that down. would be useful right at the far back where there's quite a large line, and so, exactly, we could, so yeah, they've got yeah. to be directly above to benefit from the bombs. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of a, it's a bit of a skill shot. So if you line them up like that, you can see the you can see you can see the um, the movement icons on the floor there. So if I line them up in a good spot, hopefully they won't. Oh, they've moved. They've moved. Uh, Perhaps they know I what's think coming. Let's do that. Let's get down there. Right, grenade time. Off you go. Oh, <laughs> that is <laughs> satisfying. Yeah, I'm going to drop my second load as well. There we are. Look. Yeah, brilliant. That's killed it. That's killed a few of them. They'll knock their morale a bit as well. So you know. Useful. So from experience with the gyrocopters, it's, it's best to kind of fly behind and shoot from uh, behind a unit. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like generally best to kind of, yeah, kind of be away and sort of try to target kind of their land units, the units that can't hit you, right? Like anything that's a melee unit's not going to be able to kind mm, of yeah. run up and smack you. So you want to stay away from their range because their range can actually take you down. Like if, if Al were to leave them all in range of the enemy archers like he's doing right now, like, he would actually find that his gyrocopters get routed and killed very quickly because yeah. actually they're quite weak against range, right? Like, you know, range units take down flying units, arrows pepper them, you know, they kind of eventually fall, but melee units, you know, there's not really too much counter. Uh, what was that orange? Is that is that a nightshade? And Curse of the Bad Moon. Oh. <laughs> it's all gone wrong. Oh, it's all it's all gone over there, though, so it doesn't look like this. So when Curse of the Bad Moon is cast, of course, it kind of moves in a random direction. So sometimes it works for you, sometimes it won't. Obviously, so it's, a, it's a vortex spell, right? So yep. it, Oh, I see. Okay. There's knob nails. Look, he's, he's, it looks like he's, he's used his magic in. and he's, he's got straight stuck into in. the melee. Wow, this is interesting. Oh, well, he's fighting some rowdy troops, but uh, it's obviously I'm seizing an opportunity. My long beards on him, so so that Arachnarok is still running around yeah. dealing damage, similar to the giant. Like it's really kind of large damage dealing unit there, so it's going to be With taking added big jumps. goblins uh, firing down from his back, which is so Thorgrim's awful. taking damage there. So like as I can see there, he's got a potion of healing which he can cast himself. This will give him regen over time, so it'll start kind of regening some of the health that he's lost in battle. So you know, kind of timed use of this because it's a one use item, right? Like right. once you've drunk it, there's, there's no yeah. more to drunk. Like so. You know, he's got to pick the right time to use it. Is that the ruby that. ring? That is. Oh. That's actually the fiery ring of Foddy. Oh. So. Awesome. Yeah, so, like, characters from Campaign are picking up these items and are then able to bring them and use them in battle to kind of help fight. Awesome. These situations. It's obviously been used to good effect there. I mean, considering there's that bit of narrative that with the named characters, I guess you want to keep them alive, so those those health potions are definitely beneficial. Mm, yeah, like, it, it really does help. I mean, as I say, since they're immortal, they're only wounded, but, you know, them falling in battle is a big yep. thing, right? Yep. Like, the enemy's going to take a really large morale... Like, you're going to take a large morale penalty even from them falling. And, yeah, like, exactly. You know, it's... losing Thorgrim in a battle like this, he's kind of a charismatic leader. You know, the dwarves rely on the discipline and holding together. When he falls... They've kind of lost all that, so keeping him alive is actually very important. Yeah, absolutely. But then he's also a really good damage dealer, so you've got to kind of make that choice between, you know, do I throw him in there where he's going to be useful, or, you know, do I risk him? Do you yeah. know what I mean? So you've got to kind of choose between them. But then you've got heroes like the Thane that Al's got there. So, like, you know, the Thane is really good as well. You know, kind of similar power to someone like Thorgrim. If I lose Thorgrim here, I'm going to be in trouble. You will be in a lot of trouble. Get the charge on. There you go, so you can see the long beards charging in there. Oh no, run away, Thorgrim! I love their um, their beard animation. It's it's just fantastic. <laughs> They're dusting the ground with their beards as they run. There are some absolutely epic beards going down oh, yeah. for the Dwarf and Army, I think. Oh, he's got out. Yep, that's good. Oh, and the Arachnarok's going to rout. Let's hope so. So he's hope just so engaged he's there with the, the uh, long beards oh, it's and off. Valor. It's off. The Thane. Yes! So the last oh, yeah, take that. that. <laughs> In the abdomen. That's right, I'm going to bring these guys back, actually, because I think I sorely need them. How are we doing? So I sent my uh, my um, Iron Drakes over here to start cleaning up these orc archers that have been peppering me for ages. As you can see, the oh. fire of the Iron Drakes, like, really low range. Like, they're not very... Kind of, they can't fire very far, but the damage they're dealing yeah. over time is absolutely huge. Like, they're really, really effective in that kind of situation. And, of course, their armour makes them actually quite good in melee, right? Like, they, they're a small unit, so they're not going to last too long, but they can certainly defend themselves until support arrives to mm. relieve them. So if they are engaged, do they drop their 
their cannons. Is that right with the no. iron drakes? No, they'll be hitting people around the face with their with cannons. With them? Wow. <laughs> they, get, they get a cannon in the face, as it were. No one wants a cannon in the face. Oh, yes! Hey. Al the hat man bicker. Oh, maybe, maybe work for that, I tell you. Well, done, <laughs> well, yeah, you looks like you took quite a lot of damage yeah, there. Yeah, I was panicking a bit, actually. I think you only have one unit of Quarrelers in your Thane that are vaguely unscathed. Yeah. <laughs> the Thane's unscathed. That's some pretty good oh, look, work. How many, how many, how many blows did he take? He's at 1860 hit points still. Like, wow. What a hero. And he looks right. well happy about it as well. Yeah, he does. Whereas Fulgrim, just about, he's got 159 <laughs> hit points left. He's a bit the worse for yeah, wear, but... a little. <laughs> I think he'll be, uh, yes. But Beard is still intact, right. and uh, the book is still full of grudges. I think, I think he's written off a grudge in the Damascron today. I think so. <laughs> right, well, there we are. So thank you for that, Mr Bickham. My pleasure. Yeah, well done, Al. <laughs> if you're interested in playing this yourself, you can get hands-on at EGX from the 24th to the 27th of September. I have been Joey, Simon and Al, and I really hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Like us on our social media pages and subscribe. Bye. Bye. Catch you later.